supposed to end with the final out of tonight's World Series, and that would be right about now. The options are limited. Either shot suspension will be extended, she will be forced to sell, or she will return to power. If she returns, she's expected to clean some major house in the Reds' front office. Mrs. Schott has been in control of the Reds since 1984. The Cincinnati Post reported today that baseball already has an agreement with Schott. The report says Schott will not return to power and she will sell her controlling interest in the Reds by the end of the year. But no one is publicly confirming that report. There were also reports early in the week that Schott would meet with baseball by Friday. But Mrs. Schott is still here in Cincinnati while baseball commissioner Bud Selig is in San Diego. Either baseball already has a handle on the situation or the game is more messed up than any of us can possibly. He's one of the last guys we knew, one of the last guys we'd play to see, pay to see. And a year ago, the Reds, Reds couldn't give him away, but now he is a brave. But we changed, he changed all that this season, showing us the glove, as always, and correcting a flawed swing. He went from hitting 223 and 97 to 266 this year. He led the Reds in homers with 24 and RBIs with 95. It was a career year capped off with a gold glove, finally recognized as being the finest fielding second baseman in the National League. His value increased, he heads south. The Reds send Boone and lefty Mike Remlinger to the land of Ted and Jane, Atlanta. Remlinger will take his modest numbers and slide into the Braves' bullpen. As for Boone, he gets what he wanted most, to play for a contender. On one hand, I'm very excited. On the other hand, I'm a little bit sad. I'm leaving Cincinnati, I've been there for five years. Uh, and I've had some great times there, I've had some bad times. But uh, it's the nature of the business. And, you know, this, the uh, decision was made today, and uh, you know, I'm pretty happy. If I had to pick a place to go, Atlanta would probably be the place. And coming here, a quality starting pitcher, a guy to step into the rotation with Pete Harnish and Brett Tomko. 30-year-old left-hander Denny Nagel doing a number on our man Boone here. Key stat, 36 and 16 over the past two years. Winner of 65 games over the past four years, first with the Pirates. And then with the Braves, over the past five years, he's averaged over 200 innings. Now he's bringing his wares to the Reds. You know, I think the Reds are getting a pretty damn good left-handed pitcher themselves and another quality outfielder, Michael Tucker. And from what I understand, the other kid who's in the trade with us, Robbie Bell, um, Mark DeRosa and Wes Helms were telling me, you know, the kid throws like low 90s and he's got a really good arm on himself. So, you know, uh, I'm just going to, I feel sorry for the Braves when they have to suck up a couple losses when I pitch against them next year. <laughs> Yeah, sure he's doing the Billy Idol thing, but he's signed through the 2000 season and he doesn't come alone. Reds also acquire outfielder Michael Tucker. Slick in the field, just one era last season in 130 games and sometimes potent at the plate. He's strong in the NLCS, especially game six, three for five, five ribbies. However, Tucker adds to the crowd in the outfield. Besides Nagel and Tucker, the Reds get six foot five right-hander Rob Bell, billed as one of the top prospects in the Braves organization. His wins, losses, and ERA, not impressive, but look at the strikeouts. 197 and 178 and one third innings, and he walked just 46. My only question: How's this team going to score runs? One of the first bold stroke of the offseason sends Brett Boone his Gold Glove and big salary, and pitcher Mike Remlinger, who's as dependable as a dashboard clock, to Atlanta today. Heading here is pitcher Denny Nagel with a career record of 81 and 55 and 3.78 ERA. Just 30 years old, the left-hander will more than counter the loss of Remlinger. Cincinnati also gets outfielder Michael Tucker, Sayonara Reggie. Tucker has speed, pop, 13 homers, and a $370,000 salary. Throw in minor league pitching prospect Rob Bell. You got a deal, Atlanta. We felt uh, for where we stand that uh, to add Nagel with Tom and Harnish uh, in our division in the NL Central, uh, that we'll have a very competitive uh, starting rotation. I just want to have that chance to play in the postseason again. You get a little spoiled playing with the Braves, you know, knowing year in and year out you're going to be there. So that's my only concern, that I don't want to go through that three or four year plan that the Pittsburgh Pirates have been going through. That's why I got traded from them. So I just hope I'm not going to be in a situation like that again. We'll just have to see what, you know, how it pans out there. The downside is losing Boone, who at long last got his due. A gold glove this past, his last season with the Reds. That defense is a lot of his appeal to Atlanta, frankly. We needed to add uh, some offense to our ball club, we felt. And we also wanted to improve uh, our defense uh, in the, in the uh, inner infield. Uh, Brett Boone's an all-star. Uh, second baseman, gold glove winner uh, this past season and perhaps could have won it the last several seasons. There's no guarantee they won't trade Nagel, who has a $4.75 million price tag the next two seasons, but short.
Now, his motor is running now. One day after he traded Brett Boone for Denny Nagel and more, Jim Bowden has pulled off another one. Tonight, he sends Paul Canerco to the White Sox for Mike Cameron. Cameron could be the center fielder they've been looking for. Long on defense, short on stick, no wood. He had just 210 last year with eight rips and 43 ribbies. Canerco, once regarded as one of the best hitting prospects around, didn't get much of a shot here. Now, there is one little problem with the addition of Denny Nagel. Numbers. He wears 15, and guess who else wears 15? And quite well, we might, yeah, quite well, we might add. Yeah, Jack Mack, Jack McKeon, but Nagel figures Jack might just give it up. It's one thing when you got one of the guys in your team that uh, you have to kind of, you know, ask if you can trade numbers with them, but when your manager has a number, uh, you know, I figured Jim Leland gave up his number for Gary Sheffield a couple years ago in Florida, so I would hope Jack McKeon could do the same for me. All I can say is that a good thing Marge isn't running the show anymore, because honey, the hair, it's got to go. Trade, saying the Reds haven't made promised improvements. That was before they signed Steve Avery today. Sounds like he had enough American League after two seasons and 16-14 record with Boston, especially considering his 72-52 mark with the Braves. I'm very happy and thrilled uh, to be here. Uh, obviously, uh, it's close to my home in Detroit. Uh, it was one of the main things. Uh, I wanted to do and uh, get back in National League where I, f I felt uh, very comfortable throughout my career. That the only way we could compete was to have strong starting pitching and good defense. And we believe with Denny Nagel, Pete Harnish, Brett Tomko, Steve Avery, Dennis Reyes, and Jason Bray mm -hmm. that we have six pitchers that do have the potential to win 15 games. Avery's deal is for one year with a mutual option for the 2000 season, after which Larkin can leave. And Today, Hamilton's Mark Lewis signed his, with his sixth team in the last four years. Home is where you hang your hat. Lewis has been with the Indians, Reds, Tigers, Giants, Phillies, and now the Reds again. He hit 249 for the Phillies last year and is expected to back up in the infield. To make room, the Reds cut Eduardo Perez. He was given his unconditional release. And I'm not going to go somewhere just to leave Cincinnati. I mean, I love it here. It's just a matter of going and winning. He's 34 years old and in the twilight of a career approaching Hall of Fame consideration. Barry Larkin has three gold gloves and eight silver bats, but only one World Series ring. And with two years left on his contract with the Reds, he isn't likely to get another ring soon. Unless, of course, he gets his wish and is traded. Last season, Barry named five teams he'd be willing to go to. The Dodgers, Padres, Cardinals, Cubs, and Rangers. Now, he says he'd consider any contender that needs a shortstop. Tonight, we look at the reasons Barry Larkin is very unhappy. Jim Bowden admits he told Barry Larkin that the Reds would be built around Larkin and Brett Boone. The GM says he only traded Boone because the Braves made an offer he couldn't refuse. I've never had any, you know, qualms about who they got, you know. It's a matter of philosophy, you know. What was supposed to happen and what I was told and what our team was told didn't happen. You know, the thing is, if you're going to build a foundation, you build on something that has been built, it's something solid, and don't keep breaking down that foundation. And that's what's been happening around here, and that's what I'm, I'm talking about. His comments to Hal McCoy of the Dayton Daily News attracted national attention, as did his demand to be traded. I said what I said, and I meant every word that I said. And, you know, all this uh, other stuff about money being the issue, and me wanting to go get my, more money here and there. You know, I signed here simply, I signed an extension here simply because I was told we were going to be competitive. Three years of fourth and fifth place finishes, it's not competitive. The Reds would be much less competitive without him. Larkin is not only their best player, he's their only drawing card, a fact reinforced by the autograph seekers he attracted at Reds Fest. Those fans and his teammates don't blame Larkin for wanting to leave. Yeah, he's played harder, he's done a good job, he deserves to be a contender. And they're not going anywhere this year, that's for sure. He's what Cincinnati's all about. He's born and raised and he's been here all his life, so it'd be a shame to see him go. But, you know, you can't fault the, the man for wanting to go win somewhere. And, and if he's not going to win here, then he wants to go somewhere he can win. And, he, and you can't blame him for that. Uh, but I'd love to have him here. Aaron Boone was especially moved by Larkin's outburst, seeing it as a tribute to his brother. To get that kind of reaction from him, I think, is just, you know, an honor. And it makes me proud as his brother to, you know, hear 
that he's going to be missed like that because, you know, certainly I'm going to miss him too. <laughs> For now, Barry remains a red, second among active players to Cal Ripken in service to one organization. Once again, I'm here saying that uh, you know, I'm a member of the team. When we get out there to play, I will play with these guys. They'll be my teammates, and I'll give absolutely everything I can. You know, this is just a matter of philosophy, and these guys doing whatever they're doing in the front office. If he's still here, there's little doubt Barry will produce. Larkin led National League shortstops in batting average, home runs, and RBI last season. He was second in stolen bases. Are the Reds really getting in position to compete? This is scary. Today, they pick up power hitter Greg Vaughn in a trade with the Padres. Vaughn was just one of four players to hit 50 or more homers last season. And the Reds get Vaughn without giving up any vital parts. Here's the trade. The Reds get Vaughn and outfielder Mark Sweeney. Sweeney's one of the best pinch hitters around. The Padres get three players from the Reds, Reggie Sanders, Damian Jackson, and Josh Harris, a minor league pitcher. None of those three come close to being a Greg Vaughn. The Reds announced the big trade this afternoon. General Manager Jim Bowden is downright giddy about it, as you will soon tell. Cincinnati Reds fans, are you ready to rock? Because we're ready to roll. We're not going to change focus. If this deal had affected our long-term plans, we wouldn't have made it. But we think it helps our long-term plans. And who knows, we might win a little quicker than people thought. Vaughn struggled some in 96 and 97, but in 1998, this guy exploded. He slammed 50 home runs. Only McGuire, Sosa, and Griffey Jr. had more. The Reds will have to pay a little more in salary, though. Vaughn will make $5.75 million in the final year of his contract. That's a little more than $2 million more than Sanders. So that's why Jim Bowden is begging fans to buy tickets and support this team. Neither does the franchise. Only here. The Reds get their most bona fide power broker since George Foster. And one of the first questions is not how many dingers he will provide, not how many runs he will drive in, but will he shave the goatee he's had his entire career? Come on, people. Will the Reds lift the facial hair band that is rooted in the 60s and 70s? Well, that's Marge's call. Beyond that, it's a can't-lose situation because not only does Vaughn bring a potent bat in the final year of a contract, it gives the Reds several options down the road. This is it. This is his walk here. So what does that mean to you? That means uh, let's go see if we can win a wild card and see if we can compete. Uh, if we get to July 31st and it's not working out, uh, well, maybe we might make another trade. Maybe it works out and we get the wild card and we sign him to a long-term contract. Maybe something else happens. Worst case scenario, you get two first-round picks for him. It'll be fun to see how it works out. Reds pitchers and catchers report to spring training in nine days. It was a rule. Until now, newly acquired Greg Vaughn, who has a goatee, lobbied to Reds owner Marge Schott to drop the rule, saying that his kids had never seen him with a clean face, and she acquiesced. How strictly was the rule enforced? Jim Kern managed to force a trade in 1982.